and the evolution is over. Um, the story just keeps getting bigger and better and weirder. Uh, of course, everybody knows that Monday before Monday Night Raw, they were uh, doing their things that they normally do. Emma decided to go into Walmart, and I, I, I haven't read the story with a full-on answer of, of what was stolen, but she stole something from Walmart. I've read it was an iPad, an iPod, an iPod case, an iPhone case. It was something to do with an eye. That's all I know. And uh, basically, uh, they ran some sort of a skit uh, with Santino saying that Emma uh, didn't show up for the party. And uh, I think a whole bunch of people read into that uh, as soon as Raw was over. Um, that, uh, you know, Emma uh, was was probably in some deep shit <laughs> when her uh, mugshot got put up on uh, uh, TMZ. Um Today she was released, and uh, basically Twitter is blowing up with every angle of uh, Emma jokes. Uh, last night I was uh, thinking of, of jokes like uh, um, uh, doing things to Rob Conway, <laughs> uh, with, with Rob Conway from back in the day, and um, also one with uh, Sean O'Hare. Um, I'm not telling you to do something you don't want to do or whatever that, that was from uh, 2002 on SmackDown with that horrible gimmick that he was doing with him and uh, Roddy Piper uh, talking people into doing things that were uh, that were bad. Uh, Emma uh, was trained by Lance Storm, uh, came in and had awesome matches in NXT uh, with Paige. She looked like she was going to be one of those uh, girls who was going to be help rebuilding uh, the uh, WWE Divas division. Uh, once she got put on the roster, she got put into a... Uh, love sort of relationship with Santino and uh, never was really able to get it off the ground. They wrestled like a thousand mixed tags with Van and uh and and, and Summer Rae. And uh, the, I don't even know if that you know angle ever really had an end to it. But uh, um, she was sort of sitting in a stalemate where basically uh, it seemed like with Paige being the champion and her being her, you know, number one, you know, opponent in NXT, that it would make sense for them to bring that rivalry to the main roster, even though they were both baby faces. And that's what I read into their Instagram pictures and their Instagram videos with Emma stealing the Divas Championship was that, you know, they were sort of hinting at the fact that they wanted to work together because they knew that that was basically what was going to make Paige look the best on WWE TV, even though they were trying to use her against uh, the veteran uh, heel opponents that were way lower on the list because, you know, say they had sort of been there. WWE sort of looks at it as, like, the longer you've been in WWE, the bigger your name value is. And you would page beating people like Oksana, Alicia Fox. Uh, that, that Those were all big wins. Um, with WWE releasing uh, Emma, I know that there's a whole bunch of double standards going back to uh, my man uh, Jack Swagger before WrestleMania 29. Uh, they had just kicked the uh, We the People uh, angle off, and they were moving in a, in the direction of uh, uh, Swagger winning the belts at WrestleMania 29 to, to make Alberto Del Rio have to come back against the odds, and they were trying to really make him into this big, huge uh, sort of superstar um, that never really got off the ground because I think that uh, it got really derailed by uh, uh, Jack Swagger's arrest, and uh, I don't know, it just they, they weren't able to really give him a big moment. Uh, that they were looking uh, to give him, but uh, then again, they had already, you know, put into you know plans, you know, Jack Swagger in that match. So they, they sort of probably would have fired him if it would have been any other time of the year. But since this was WrestleMania, uh, he had already won the Elimination Chamber. Uh, creative was probably blowing a gasket trying to think of any way they could to take that away from him, and in order to put somebody else in there. Um, but, you know, Jack Swagger really made the, the company look bad. And I think WWE right now is really trying to do what the NFL does and protect the shield. And just basically anytime your name is in the newspaper for anything that's, you know, not good, anything that's bad, you know, anything that's, you know, sort of creating controversy and putting bad, you know, on the, uh, on the NFL, if it's a, a DUI, if it's a spousal abuse, if it's, you know, just anything that gets your name out there, the NFL just three game suspension done. And, uh, you know, you know, figure your shit out, come back when you're ready to play, and, you know, be one of those players that makes us look good. WWE right now um, doesn't need anybody uh, on the roster, basically, who's going to be creating this sort of bad controversy. I know that, you know, there's been people in the company who have uh, failed drug tests, this, that, and the other. And, you know, there's some people that do have protected spots. Um, you know, yeah, I'm sure if 
Randy Orton got arrested tomorrow for stealing an iPad case at Walmart. I, I, I'm sure that he wouldn't be fired. I, I'm sure that they would do everything in their ways to, to, to figure out why the hell Randy Orton would be going to Walmart and stealing DVD, um, or not DVDs, but uh, uh, stealing iPad covers. But basically, um, when you're at the bottom of the Divas division and you're a uh, uh, character that you know they put a little bit of time into but really there is no time for you on a three-hour Monday Night Raw or two-hour Smackdown um you're sort of not needed I was sort of looking at these people that came up from NXT of course everybody's gonna remember her from the first NXT sort of pay-per-view um I thought I, I was thinking that these people were going to be protected by Triple H almost you know Triple H moving into the role of you know the you know the the big time creative person that, that's really running everything, especially with the guy who's in charge of what's going on at NXT. The guys like Big E, the guys like Rusev, Paige, um, Emma, you know, these first, you know, sort of graduates out of their school. These are, you know, his guys. You know, there's Paul Heyman guys. These are basically going to be Triple H guys. And I was thinking that basically, you know, Triple H was going to protect them and make sure that they were stars to sort of put the, a proving ground on the performance center. You know, you, you go here, we train you, we put you into WWE, you move up the ladder. You know, it's not going to be like WCW, basically, like you put your money down, you train to the power plant. If you were good enough to get off the power plant, you got on TV, and then basically you did jobs for the next six years because there's nowhere to move up in the WWE. Uh, you know, Triple H has put an emphasis on what's best for business, and I think that he really does know that, you know, the guys that are on top right now, um, uh, Orton, Cena, um, I guess you can even put Mysterio, um, you know, these guys that are there are not going to be there forever. That's why you see such an emphasis on Cesaro, Roman Reigns, um, even Seth Rollins right now. You know, they, 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 he knows that, you know, if he keeps pushing these people down and making them, you know, sit forever in the mid card, there's never going to be a main event of WrestleMania in the future because, you know, basically, unless you have seen a wrestle until he's 75, um, there's really, you know, nowhere for, for them to go. Uh, Emma the, getting released, you know, there's a good chance um, maybe she sits out for a while. Maybe she makes this go away. Maybe uh, they bring her back in sort of like in a, uh, you know, Daniel Bryan uh, sort of way where, you know, he was fired. He stayed at home for, I can't remember how long that was. I, I don't think it was six months, but it was a good little while. Um, and, and then he, you know, showed back up at SummerSlam and, he was right back in the mix. Maybe you know she can you know go home, uh, figure her shit out, and then come back. Uh, maybe they they make her go to I, don't know, I was gonna say sensitivity training, but you know some sort of you know thing to find out why she stole stuff. Maybe sometimes you know they always find out that you steal stuff to sort of do other things. You can go back and read about the Winona Ryder case from back in the day, uh, the chick that was in Mr. Deeds with uh, Adam Sandler, um, but. Uh, I, I really didn't think I was going to make a video on this. Yesterday I got asked why um, I, I wasn't going to make a video. And honestly, the first thing I thought about was 2010 Stevie Breach would have made a video on Emma getting arrested at Walmart. Um, but I don't really know anything about her getting released. <laughs> I mean, I don't know anything about her getting you know arrested at Walmart. I, I know what everybody else knows. And um, getting released sucks. Uh, but honestly, in my mind, I, I think that she... I think she will be back over going to TNA. If she needs a check right away, maybe TNA picks her up. But then again, does TNA really want to bring in somebody with bad publicity? Or maybe do they want to try and bring somebody in to their Divas division? Which I think they are pretty well set right now if you really think about what's going on uh, with with Rebel. You've got uh, Velvet Sky, Angelina Love, Madison. Uh, you've got the lesbian chick. Um, and... Um, you, you even got um, Taryn Terrell coming back. That's six girls. That's more girls than I can name in WWE right now, honestly, off the top of my head. <laughs> that's, um, that, that's a pretty big knockouts division for TNA, so tip your hat to those guys. Peace out, everybody. Have a good one.